What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 greatest Iron Man performances in Royal Rumble history. We are right around the corner from the Royal Rumble as of me filming this. Royal Rumble is this Saturday, and I'm looking forward to it, man. I cannot wait to see what's gonna happen, what type of surprises we're gonna get at the Royal Rumble, how the match is gonna play out for the men and women Royal Rumble matches. Looking forward to it. Um, but it's always cool in a match where you have sometimes well in the royal rumble match there's that one person that becomes the iron man or the iron woman where they last longer than people expected or they try to build a story off of someone lasting a very long time in the royal rumble match one of my favorite ones is the uh the ray mysterio one right after eddie guerrero passed and him last i believe it was like 60 minutes and to be and to win it it was such a good it was a good uh like a, a good warm feeling to see that like people wanted to see ray you know be the one to overcome it in the memory of of eddie Guerrero. and it was one of my favorite royal rumbles and one of my favorite royal rumble wins uh winners so we're gonna check this out i'm pretty sure they're gonna talk about it. appreciate all love and support let's get right into this video man what makes a good iron man performance well ideally they should be conventionally handsome ideally with a slightly dark past to reflect the character's own demons look good in both a tailored suit and cgi suit they should be able to do a lot of good close-up face acting a lot of shots from inside the helmet and yeah i'm bored of this bit too a Royal Rumble <laughs> iron man is a yearly tradition someone who sticks around from the start of the rumble and lasts roughly until the very end someone around whom you can build a bunch of spots Someone who provides the match with a spine, a sense of structure or identity. And Iron Man won't always win the match, but it's definitely a role only given to a select trusted few. Someone the company believes can carry the biggest match of the year on their back. I'm Adam Hailing from Parts Far Known, and here are 10 greatest Iron Man performances in Royal Rumble history. And while you're here, if you'd like to keep up with our very stupid wrestling content like Survival Series, some more of these lists, my booking videos, Make sure you subscribe to Parts Fun Known. Subscribe they if turn you on haven't already. It really matters. It, it really does. So, <laughs> new year, new you, new sub. Number 10, Shawn Michaels, 1995. I mean, this immediately feels like it's breaking the rules of this video. After all, in almost any other rumble, an Iron Man is defined by lasting about an hour in the uh -huh. ring. That's what Iron Man means in a wrestling sense. And everyone else on this list clocks in around that 50 minute to an hour mark with a capital mark because he is wrestling reference. Shawn Michaels' run, the 1995 Royal Rumble, was 38 minutes long. This is because WWE, perhaps they were concerned about someone going from number one all the way to the end for the very first time, changed the rumble format so that someone entered the match every 60 seconds oh damn every fucking minute jesus christ still even though it's a horribly rushed rumble and the rumble contained the harris brothers who were literal nazis it's still an iconic performance from hbk here once anonymous with heroic endurance overcoming the odds and herculean task which is what iron man performances are supposed to be even mm -hmm. in a wet fart rumble match number nine sasha banks 2018 of course, it had to be Sasha. The woman now known as Mercedes Monet and currently mm -hmm. blue-balling AEW fans did everything <laughs> first for women in WWE in the 2010s. First NXT main event, first Iron Woman match, first Hell in a Cell, first pay-per-view main event. So uh -huh. naturally, when it came time for the first ever Women's Rumble, Sasha came out first and was the first Iron Woman in Rumble history. Of course she was. Made a lot of the Rumble seem more cohesive, too. The first Women's Rumble was a bit scattershot. Not enough main roster women to fill it out a lot. Of nostalgia returns but sasha's hour-long run throughout kept things grounded mixing it up with pretty much everyone who stepped through the curtain helps that sasha's so good she's a dream match machine as well mm -hmm. sasha versus lita check sasha yep. versus trish check, check. <laughs> seeing her old favorites fight with the new favorite just kept the hype machine rolling throughout the women's rumble 2018 and speaks to why an iron man performance is so important they keep things from falling apart number eight chris benoit 2004 the redacted yep. rumble is fairly underrated there's a few lovely little bits in it that you'll never see in a Rumble recap package. The Randy Orton, Mick Foley stuff, the yeah. Goldberg stuff. And the reason why you won't see it is because there's a chance you'll catch the number one entrant in the background. Iron Man and Rumble match winner, Chris Benoit. Honestly, the performance completely makes the Rumble as well. Benoit has the most eliminations throughout. His cardio is insane, so he's always around to right. involved in spots. His performances are beating I, hard I, the whole thing. I don't think we understand. Like, a lot of times in the Royal Rumble, you see people just laying down, trying to <laughs> just kind of chilling. But the fact that, you know, 
to be in that match for that long, trying to keep the selling going, trying having these di different interactions with all the new competitors that's coming into the match and you know, people that's been in the match. Your cardio kind of has to be up. And a lot of times you definitely see people just laying down, trying to catch a break. It's It, it does happen, so. And if you remove it, the rumble would have been nowhere near as good as it was. Just considering everything, it's a hard thing to go back and rewatch. Knowing that the hell that Chris Benoit would regularly put his body and brain through was such a contributing factor to what ended up happening. Objectively, yeah. though, it is a standard bearer Iron Man performance. Number seven, Chris Jericho, 2013, 2016, and 2017. It's crazy to think that he still, out of all the times he was in WWE, he never won a Royal Rumble. You would think. Chris Jericho would be one of the few people to actually have won a Royal Rumble. Three years, three separate goddamn years, Chris Jericho's turned in an Iron Man performance at the Rumble. Bloody hell, he did it in back-to-back -back years in 2016 uh -huh. and 2017. In 2013, Chris Jericho came in number two and lasted for 47 minutes alongside co-Iron Man Dolph Ziggler. In 2016, he entered number six and lasted 50 minutes. That's in 2017, crazy. he entered number two and lasted over one hour. Bloody hell, Chris. You're not here for a good time. You're here for a long time. He may never have won a Rumble in his WWE career, which is bonkers, mm -hmm. considering he had an actual WWE title match at WrestleMania in 20 bloody 12, but he does at least have one record to his name. Longest total time in the ring at almost five hours. Damn. Returns, 11 Royal Rumble matches. That's silly, Chris Jericho. Why are you so silly? Did Fozzie drive you insane? I'm guessing they did by the tattoos you've chosen to get. Number six, Edge and Bianca Belair, That's 2021. Incredible. God, the 2021 Rumbles were weird. Like, neither of them were bad yeah. from an objective standpoint. It's Rumbles, they were both structured fine, were stacked with talent, had lots of fun moments, love you forever, Christian, but also took place in the Thunderdome, uh -huh. which is to the enjoyment of a wrestling match as a mousetrap is to the enjoyment of a christening. It's weird, certainly interesting, but ultimately puts a dampener on things. Also, a bit of a weird thing about 2021, both Rumbles were won by the person putting in the Iron Man performance. Uh -huh. Odd bit of double booking there. Bianca Belair won it from number three clocking in 57 minutes edge won it from number one clocking in at 58 minutes a star making turn for bianca and a you still got it turn for edge although yeah. it is worth pointing out that bianca's hair looked a lot better than edges by the end of the rumble <laughs> two really impressive performances in a pair of impressive rumbles that would be much more beloved in fan memory if it wasn't for that stupid bloody plague man uh, i wish that would have happened in front of a crowd oh that would have been awesome would have been a great Great moment to see in front of a crowd. Number five, Rey Mysterio, 2006. It is Got very it. funny that everyone constantly talks about Rey Mysterio's admittedly very good indeed performance in the 2006 Royal Rumble lasting one hour and two minutes. And everyone ignores it in the same Rumble, Triple H lasts one hour, even eliminating six dudes, same as Rey Rey. Uh -huh. But no, Mysterio got the record and the acclaim. And that is objectively hilarious considering Triple H and the whole ruthless aggression, you know, reign of terror regardless of that fun fact this is a brilliant showcase for Rey Mysterio like Shawn Michaels and Chris Benoit before him exactly the kind of performance needed to cement a wrestler's promotion from the upper mid card to the main event scene Rey Mysterio is the heart and soul of this year's rumble with extra yeah. emotional weight owing to him dedicating the match to the recently passed Eddie Guerrero yeah. his time in the ring was record setting and for over a decade stood as the longest individual time in a royal rumble that is until Number four, Daniel Bryan, Greatest Royal Rumble. Look, if Tempest is going to count it on... I'm going to be honest with you. I never watched the Greatest Royal Rumble. I never, like, actually just sat through and watched it. I didn't watch that shit. I just, I didn't care. Survival series. And hey, you should watch that video, by the way. It's bloody brilliant. Then I have to count it here. The Greatest Royal Rumble, a.k.a. when the Saudi Royal Family bought themselves a Rumble and tricked it out with 20 extra wrestlers. That's exactly what makes a Royal Rumble great. It's how many more mid carters and Hiroki Sumis you can cram into the... Yeah. yeah. Honestly, the rumble is fairly crap, but there is no denying that a certain furry friend goes above and beyond to try and make the whole thing work, with Daniel Bryan entering at number one and being in the rumble for one hour and 16 minutes. Jesus. King hell. Christ. And he left half of his rib cage in the ring. Quite Jesus. literally, bloody hell, oh Daniel. God. Like Y2J, Bryan has criminally never won a rumble, but at least has a record to his name because I don't think anyone's breaking this one anytime soon. Jeez. At some point quantity has a certain quality of its very own and it may be a tainted one rumble with a capital taint but what a superhero performance from Woo! the best to ever do it Fact. an hour and 16 minutes that's too long number three <laughs> steve austin 1997 one of the best things about the royal rumble is it gives people a chance to make a name for themselves a mm -hmm. statement a chance for wwe to say to its fans hey we're pretty sure this is the guy 
thoughts. Sometimes when that guy is Roman Reigns, the response is a polite f off and die. Facts. But in 1997, <laughs> when it was Stone Cold Steve Austin, the fans responded, yes, that'll do nicely. Austin star had been rising for a while in 96 with a Stone Cold persona, an excellent match at Survivor Series against Bret Hart. But the 97 Rumble is what truly made him, and he bloody worked for it too. He arrived at number five, lasted 45 minutes, eliminated 10 people, tying Hogan's record at the time. Mm. But most importantly, there were multiple points throughout the match where Austin eliminated the entire field and was left alone in the ring. Oh, a yeah. pure and perfect spotlight on him with WWE screaming in all caps, this is the guy. Yeah. Cole Austin <laughs> sitting on the turnbuckle looking at his watch gimmick was brilliant and brought back five years later almost to the day with Austin's performance in the 2002 Rumble. Number two, Ric Flair, 1992. God, the 92 Rumble's good. That's really good though, in a way that you imagine it might not be considering, you know, it's old and that, but no, watch it again. It still humps. One of the big reasons why is because of the stakes in the match. The WWE Championship is on the line for the first time ever. Mm. And as such, the field of competitors is particularly potentially the most stacked it's ever been. Flair, Hogan, Justice, Undertaker, DiBiase, Piper, Roberts, any of yeah. these guys <laughs> could conceivably walked out with the title, but of course, it had to be Flair. How else were we gonna get Hogan versus Flair at WrestleMania 8? Oh, f***ing wait a minute. It's an absolutely <laughs> iconic Rumble performance from so many angles. First time an Iron Man had won it, lasting over an hour as well. The whole not fair to Flair narrative being constantly pushed by Bobby Heenan, having an all-time great showing on commentary, the post-match promo. It feels like yep. the whole match was built around Flair because it was, which combined with the unique stakes, technically, probably makes it the best Iron Man performance in Rumble history. It's just not my favorite. That would be number one, Kane, mm. 2001. Oh, f yeah. I mean, it's my favorite Royal Rumble. The first time I properly stayed up late to record it, then run home from school the next day to watch it without knowing who'd win. Magical little Rumble for me. And this match is one of the reasons that I loved Kane so much. What a showcase I wasn't for the expecting Big Red this. Machine. Arrives in an all-time great comedy spot that in no way diminishes Kane's aura. Got the hardcore championship segment. Kane and clears the whole ring. Honky-tonk man comedy spot. Amazing. <laughs> Kane versus The Rock. Undertaker arrives and the Brothers of Destruction clear the ring again. Poor Scotty. Yeah, poor Kane's Scotty. Part of the yeah. final two the entire time he is in the Rumble, all 53 minutes. Damn. He's just built up and up as this unstoppable final boss, setting an elimination record that would stand for over a decade. WWE like to hype up their supernatural monsters with a lot of smoke and mirrors, but in the 2001 mm -hmm. Royal Rumble, they truly made one right there, right in front of our eyes, and it was beautiful. Rumble, Rumble. Yeah. I, I remember, like, for the longest time until Roman Reigns, I believe, he broke the record. They would always hype up Kane has the most eliminations in the Royal Rumble. Kane has the most eliminations in the Royal Rumble. They would always hype that up because that was just a, a cool stat to know. Like, this, this monster was out here just chucking people over the top rope and then the big dog at the time became the person i believe to eliminate the most people in the world rumble you know you know how that goes you know how that goes but now this was a pretty cool list me personally ray mysterio would be at the top of my list on this type of video only because just the sentimental value and what it meant at the time and for wwe to actually pull the trigger and to go with someone of a smaller stature you know to really you know go behind this person and ray like no one thinks like when you really sit there and think about it even though ray is very talented in the eyes of vince mcmahon and others oh he can't be a world champion you know he doesn't even he's not you know he doesn't fit the world champion bill but to see that and granted we know why it happened obviously uh eddie's passing was really a, a catalyst for that and how close they were so you know it was kind of them kind of just throwing ray mysterio a bone it was still cool to see you know it was still a beautiful moment so comment down below let me know what's your favorite iron man performance in a royal rumble ever let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the video um, road to 150k, and I am still, yeah, this will be the YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See you next one. Peace.